Hey, Leader Tribe, Dr. Robster here with a friend who's normally always behind the camera. But uh, this is Joshua Jarvis, dear friend. Now, a lot of you might know him from over at the Facebook group or a lot of his posts that he does related to Leader Tribe. Totally loves leadership, has helped out for a long time. How in the world are you? I am great. I'm excited to be here. Okay. Hey, we uh, uh, not long ago did a, a series out of this book, of this issue of a Harvard Business Review. And uh, you'll probably remember it. It's the greatest study ever. It uh, had gone over 10 years and they found out the four things that the top CEOs do mm -hmm. over and over and yeah. over again. So we, we studied it, we prepared it, we filmed it, we got all that done. And one of them was the fact that uh, CEOs, let me read it right from the, right from the uh, magazine here. Um, CEOs who engage stakeholders do not invest their energy in being liked or protecting their teams from painful decisions. So it's basically, they're not, they're not going around investing all this emotional energy trying to get people to like them. Okay, so we did that and now we're going on to some other research and Joshua, tell us what that says. You know, when we did the, uh, I guess it was last, uh, the Leaders Legacy podcast that you did, mm -hmm. um, and we found out that um, likability was a factor in their research. So, and so I was like, hey, Rob, what, what do we do here? We've got this research that says that you don't have to care about likability, and then the other one says you do have to care about it. So I'm like, what? which one's right? So it was a fascinating discussion. Actually, it took place over text. I'm saying, no, that's not true because of this, and every time I would do it, Joshua would text back with a quote from the book that would shut down whatever I just said. So thanks a lot for doing that. Yeah, it was, well, it was, it was, I was just reading this and I was telling Rob, I said, you know, I was going through the whole thing and uh, it was like college because I was, I was wanting to make sure you guys got the podcast quickly and, um, or the vlog quickly. And so I'm reading this. And so as he would text something back, I'd read another line that says, no, 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 this research was, was counteracting that research. And so what we've done is we've looked at the two together and we think we have the solution. So here's the deal. Should you want to be liked if you're a leader or not? And I think the answer is if you're spending your emotional energy wanting to be liked and if your motivation is that I want to be liked, that might be some dangerous ground because what they found is that the lowest performing CEOs, the ones who got fired, they tried to protect their team from conflict and get other people to like them. Uh, but not so the people who were at the top performing. And so tell us what uh, Kuzas and Posner says in their research at the top performing. Well, it just says that uh, basically everyone else that, ever, that on <laughs> our research and practically everyone else on the subject clearly shows that, the, uh, that people perform significantly more effective when their leaders treat them with dignity and respect. And uh, I think when, when you and I talked about it, it was really that, that sort of that value proposition, mm -hmm. and really valuing them. Um, and the leader's uh, legacy actually says love, which mm -hmm. might be too strong for, for some of you, but um, it's a different approach. And to me, like that, I, that was the answer to the question of, well, how do you balance these two mm -hmm. researchers? How do, you, how do you not care about being liked and just producing results, but also know that likability is part of that? So how do you, how do, you do both of those things? And it came to me, it was, um, it was that value. How do you value someone else mm -hmm. as, a, as a sort of a person, if you will? Right, so all of a sudden, if I've got these employees and I'm like, I don't care if they like me or not, as long as they respect me, that's a really stupid thing to say because you're basically saying you have to either like or respect. Well, you can have both. As a matter of fact, those who are really likable often are the most respected. But here's what happens. If I'm doing this just to try to get them to like me to get my way, that's one thing. But if you like people, you show it. You show it in certain ways. Things like respecting them, listening to them, engaging with them, caring about what they say, giving them autonomy in their work, empowering them. You do all those things. Those are things you do when you like people. And so all of a sudden you want to be liked. Why? Because you want to treat people well, just like that. And when you do, they start to perform remarkably better. Yeah, I think um, I, it's uh, one of those analogies for me is, is actually thinking about my kids. You know, am I going to have a difficult conversation with my children? Yes, but do I absolutely love them? Yes. And it's like that kind of that same approach, I think, to, um, to the people that, that, you, that are direct reports to you, that you have to have those same difficult conversations. And in the leader's legacy, it actually says that, that that's the tough truth about leading is that you're going to have to, to make difficult decisions that may hurt people. But that it's you're going to have to you're not going to avoid the conflict, but it's because you're not avoiding it because you love them, not because 
uh, you know, you want to be liked. Mm -hmm. So true. Often conflict is what's going to really cement the relationship. Let me give you a real quick example. You got a friend at work and, and uh, you're, it's a colleague, you're working on stuff together and most of the time you're just yucking it up and you have a good time. You really like the person, they like you. And then all of a sudden you disagree on something. Yeah, what about this? What about that? Well, and you get into it a little bit. Now you're always kind of going, hmm, are we okay? Right? Uh, are we okay? And then we find out the next day one or the other goes, hey, you know what? When we kind of got into it yesterday, I thought that was really good. I appreciate the way you challenged. Oh yeah, no, I did too. And what you're doing is it's you're almost coming back and saying, I really like that. That was really helpful for both of us. All of a sudden what happens is that relationship goes to an entire new level because you know our our relation can relationship can withstand some conflict and once we come to agreement on conflict it tightens things up all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think back to when, you know, when I was playing sports, the coaches only loved you if they got onto you. That's, really? how you, that's how you knew you, they cared about you, was that they would actually correct what you were doing wrong. I'm so glad I didn't have his coaches. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so bottom line, summary, the whole thing as far as should a leader like to be liked and why? You know, I think that you need to have it on your radar, but it's only through that you need to value people in a sense where, as the, the research was saying, that you know, you're treating them with dignity. There's a, like a, a laundry list of things that that you can do that are quantifiable uh, if, you're, if your mind is wired that way to actually show value to someone. Um, but at the same time, you need to produce results. And so you've got to be, you've got to be able to engage in the conflict and those difficult decisions, um, but you've got to do it in a way that is you know, with, with dignity. So should a leader want to be liked? Should they? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer for him. Yes! But it's not because you're just trying to suck up to them or get them to like you. It's because you're respecting them, loving them. And then the natural byproduct of that would be the closer relationship. That's my opinion. It's working for me so far. Uh, hey, great research on both of those. Thanks so much for uh, being a part of the Leader Tribe. And as a result, what we're going to do is put together a little PDF that has both of these articles so that you can compare them for yourself. Have a great week. This is Dr. Robster. And Joshua Jarvis. Joshua Jarvis. We're making it happen here at Leader Tribe. Take care.